uh, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin, who serves on the Armed Services Committee. He joins us from Charleston, uh, West Virginia. Uh, Senator, did you have any uh, contact or discuss any of this uh, with Senator Cotton before he took this action? I, I did not, uh, and no one from my staff came and said that anyone had approached him. And you know, if this was going to be a sense of the Senate, Bob, you would think it would try to be as bipartisan as, as possible to see if that's a direction we feel strongly about. And maybe we could have helped uh, negate this from happening. I think it was wrong. I would not have signed it, but I was not approached. Uh, the White House Chief of Staff, Dennis McDonough, has written the chairman of the uh, Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Bob Corker, and asked him uh, this morning to hold off on any legislation on Iran or this deal uh, on the issue of whether or not a uh, nuclear deal can be reached until uh, at least June. Uh, does that does that sound right to you? Because I know that uh, Senator Tim Kaine says yeah. that probably you can't wait that long, and he's the Democrat. He he wants Congress to vote on this. Well, let me just say this: that Democrats and Republicans alike are committed not to allow Iran to have a nuclear weapon. It's just, I guess, the approach of how we go about it. You, we've got to speak with one voice. Now we can speak within the process that we have and let the White House and the State Department know how strongly we feel about something, against it, or for it. Perfect example, Bob, was back, back when the State Department came over and tried to explain to us why they wanted to uh, start bombing uh, Syria, if you recall that uh, not that long ago, a year or two ago. Uh, I, as a Democrat, spoke out loudly against that. I thought all it did was light the fuse for the Third World War. And basically all of us, Democrats and Republicans, who felt strongly that we shouldn't drop the bomb, we were able to succeed and the President was able to negotiate with Russia to remove the chemical weapons. That did not take an approval of Congress. But we were heard. This same process should be used now. And what we need to do, we sent a, I signed a letter with Bob Menendez and other senators basically saying, let's see how far you've progressed on the end of March if we have a deal in the making. And then at the end of June, if we don't have a deal at hand, we will double down on sanctions. But we're still allowing the White House and, and the State Department to do their job. Do you think this uh, action uh, by Senator Cotton uh, and this letter has poisoned the well? It sure hasn't helped a thing. It hasn't helped one thing, except drive us further apart. You know, the country is, is, is divided enough. We need to start bringing us together. And for, like you said, over 200 years, we've operated under a process that basically we've had the executive branch, the State Department, the executive branch working and speaking as one, but speaking through and with us being able to have input from the legislative branch. I believe that has worked very well. I believe it still can. But we could second guess all day long and get nothing accomplished. There's five other countries, as Secretary Kerry had said. It's not just the United States of America. And if you want sanctions to work, it's got to be a bigger part of NATO, a bigger part of the world doubling down and saying, listen, you're not part of the civilized world. Either get your act together or we will make it more difficult for you. All right. Well, Senator, we want to thank you for joining us this morning. We'll talk about some of the other news of the day when we come back.